Thank you for watching Concord United on YouTube. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. If you'd like to learn more about our church, please visit our website at concordunited.org. We hope you will take advantage of our many opportunities to share Christ, serve others, and grow in faith. Okay, a couple of quick things before um, I have a few words to say, uh, and that is one, we're going to be having Holy Communion, and there are a couple of things to say about that. Uh, will there be a, four stations, one here, 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 and here, and no one's going to come and get you. There aren't going to be any ushers. You'll just come to the one that seems to be the one closest to you. No pushing, no shoving. Just remember kindergarten, and everything will work out great. We have plenty of bread and juice, and we'll, and you know, we'll just call Uber Eats if we run out. We'll get some more. It's not a problem. Um, but also, the, the, and if someone will tear a piece of bread, and, and if you'll just hold your hand like that, they'll drop the bread in your hand, and then you'll be given a little cup of juice. So, no problem. The other thing is, there is gluten-free right here. If you need that, gluten-free uh, elements right here, you can, that's self-serve. Um, and then just one other thing before I get started, and that is that uh, this has been a wonderfully rich worship service, and there's every possibility that we may not be done by noon, and that's okay too. Just let it go. The bu buffets will still be open. There'll be plenty of food for everybody uh, wherever you go for lunch today. Uh, we'll try to get it all done, but uh, we don't want to hurry through these, these important moments in the life of our church, and particularly our time at the table. But what I do want to talk about for a few minutes is a concept that I learned a long time ago. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a concept of business, uh, and it's called added value or value added. Sometimes you can hear it both ways. And the first time I ever heard the term, I was working at a, a little radio station. We played country music, and we were in a little town, a relatively small town. And when you're a little radio station playing country music, things are really difficult because there's WIVK, and everybody listens to WIVK. And it will come in, I believe, leave on any desert island anywhere in the middle of the Pacific on a rock if you pick it up and just listen to it. So if you, if you also play country music in your little town, most people are listening to WIVK. We understand that. We still have to make a living. So, so our, it, it was hard to sell advertising. So our general manager had this great idea. We're going, to, we're going to add value to our commercials and we're going to give everyone a free live broadcast if they buy a certain commercial package. And to kind of up the end, he, he bought this old Jeep and he had somebody design a cowboy hat to go on top of it, made out of canvas. And the fact that it was supposed to be this big 10 gallon cowboy hat, but the fact is it looked like, it looked like the nipple off of a baby bottle. I mean, and people, I mean, people would talk to, people started calling it the nipple mobile because it was so embarrassing to have to go out in it. And that was supposed to bring people to these stores. So we started doing these remote broadcast uh, from this local chain of convenience stores in this little town. And hey, it was value added for the station. They made extra money. It was value added for the store. They supposedly it drew people, though a lot of times they told us, don't, don't bring that Jeep. You don't have to bring the Jeep if you don't want to. It's okay. And for the disc jockeys, what we got out of the deal, free RC and all the Slim Jims we could eat. Now, let me tell you, I don't care how hungry you are or how young you are, a Slim Jim will only go so far and it's time for something else. So it really wasn't, it really wasn't an added value for most of us. It was just for the ones that were making money. But, but it's this idea of you add something to a product or a service to try to make a little more money for it or maybe get a few more clients to buy your product, whatever it may be. Well, God has an idea about added value when it comes to our lives. But, but the big difference is with God, there is added value for everybody. Whenever we live our lives according to his plan and according uh, to his, uh, his way of, of doing things, we not only add value to our life, but we add value to the lives of people around us. And I would ask this morning, and don't have to see a show of hands, but I wonder how many of us right now would love to add a little value to our life, or certainly may have thought about that over a period of time. Maybe we'd like to have better relationships with family and friends. Maybe we'd like to have a little more leisure time, or maybe a little more time to be productive. I don't know what it may be, but most people at one time or another feel as though 
though their life isn't everything they thought it would be, and they would love to have added value. And so we try to do that for ourselves. And sometimes it comes to we, we work more or we, we work out, and, and those are all good things as long as we don't work too much. Uh, and we try to focus on the idea that if we, if we make more money, work more hours, get more stuff, then it'll add value to our life. And, and it may, and there's nothing wrong with working hard and having stuff. I'm not saying that. But, but sometimes it doesn't get us where we need to go. And, and we can also do some things that harm us as we're looking for added value in life. You know, social media can be an added value. And we can stay in touch with people we haven't seen in years. We can have our grandchildren, which is my favorite part of social media, at our fingertips anytime we want to check it out. But you know what else you can do? You can also lay in bed and lose three hours just like that, looking at TikTok videos and, and, try, and, and lamenting the fact that this person has four million followers and you, don't, you have three. And, and that's not adding value to your life. But, but people do that and not just TikTok videos, but others. But you get the idea. So, so God has an idea about how to add value because God created us for maximum life. God doesn't want us living small. God wants us living large all the time according to the way he has designed us. And there's a way to do that, and he encourages us to do it. And um, there's one particular encouraging passage I want to read that comes from a book called Timothy, way over at the end of the New Testament. And it's a letter that Paul wrote to a protege. He is actually a young man that he was mentoring named Timothy. And Timothy had followed him into the faith and, uh, and was leading a, a church in Ephesus, we think, a house church there. And Paul wanted to encourage him because things were difficult sometimes in those early days of the church. Uh, and as we will read, there were people teaching things that weren't really true. And it was leading people in the wrong direction. And Paul was trying to encourage him don't listen to them, but stay focused on two or three key things, and, and it will not only add value to your life, but value to others. Because here's the bottom line. We can do whatever we want to add value to our life, but our life has added value the more we value the life of God in us. Because all these external things can only go so far, and it's encouraging the life of God in us that's where we find real value of living. So let me read this, just a little bit of this, uh, part of this letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. And it's important to remember that Timothy was young. And, you know, we don't know exactly. Maybe he was around 30. <clears throat> but this was in a culture that valued old men. You know, so I'm, th I'm thinking, man, I wonder if I could get beamed back to that because I'm getting closer to old man every day. But, but it was really a problem. Elders were revered and young people were not. And, you know, sometimes these days it, it kind of gets reversed and, and it's all about being young and, and older people, you know, it's like, okay, you've had your time, get off to the side. Um, but, but in Timothy's case, that wasn't so. And there were people pushing back on his leadership of the church. And so Paul wanted to encourage encourage him. And, and let, me, let me read this to you uh, from chapter 4, starting with verse 6. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, he's talking about the people in the church. And by the way, these things, he's talking about some of these strange teachings uh, that were, for instance, uh, from some of the people who were Jewish converts to the faith, and they were insisting that men be circumcised. And you can imagine how that went over. But, and that was causing a lot of strife in the church, to say the least. Uh, and there were other teachings from, uh, from pagans who were in the church that they were going back and bringing stuff out of some of these pagan religions, and it was confusing people and not adding value to lives, that's for sure. So that's what these things are. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you'll be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. And that's kind of what he was talking about, some of those teachings. Teachings. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, and that's good for those of us who like to work out a little. But godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And hold on, godliness sounds like one of those unachievable church um, values, right? How can we be godly? Who can be godly? Well, it's not as hard as you think, and I'm going to explain it in just a minute. But this is where we find true value in living. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, that that's why we 
we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Underline that. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine, another key word, closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And that sounds confusing. Uh, it's like, wait a minute, only Jesus can save, right? And of course. But Paul in other places talks about working out our salvation on a daily basis. And what he means is, is if we live into this salvation, if we have lived into this being saved, that is clearly something only Jesus can do, then then we begin to reflect that in the world and others see it and then they may be saved too. So that's kind of what what Paul's talking about. So, So let's talk about two or three things real quickly that can be confusing in this passage that can help us, however, to find Added value, real added value, value beyond just being uh, uh, an, you know, a human being who's existing on the planet. That's not enough. That's not what God wants for us. Just breathing, just having a beating heart, just going through the motions of, of working and, and sleeping and working and sleeping, it's just not enough. God wants more for us and we can have more. So, so let, me, let me say this right now. Godliness, let's start with that. That's how it happens. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of, of, of what the, the, the result of that is. Godliness is reflecting the nature of the kingdom of God in daily living. And it's really as simple as that. And the nature of the kingdom of God, go back and read the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew and when uh, Jesus is giving his Sermon on the Mount and he's talking about, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the, those who mourn and grieve. Uh, he's talking about how in the kingdom of God, things are reversed and the last are first and the first can be last. And he talks about, there's some thou shalts and thou shalt nots, but it's all sort of taking the Ten Commandments and going just a little further with it. He says, yeah, you've heard don't commit murder, but he's also said if you hate somebody and if you use hate speech, to use a common to current term, but if you go around slandering people and speaking hatefully of other people, it's the same thing, he says. And it's like adultery. So you've all heard don't commit adultery, but in the in in that passage of scripture when Jesus is laying out the contours of the kingdom he's saying if you even look at somebody lustfully you're already you've already committed adultery so so the point of that is kingdom living is simply living the way God has designed us to live within some certain guidelines that will also what will improve our life and will also improve the life of people around us so so he says physical training is of some value and and that's important because The physical training that Paul is talking about here comes from a Greek word. Our word gymnasium comes from it. But there was this cult of physical fitness. And we've had that at times in this country too. But this was a little darker and seedier than that in those days back in the first century in the Roman culture. um, Where parents would send their kids off to these gymnasia and and they would be groomed and they would and their bodies were were meant to to look as good as a body can possibly look and they would slather them down with oil and they were supposed to be like little g gods and goddesses uh, from this physical training And, and sometimes it got a little dark and a little ugly and so what Paul was saying here is, uh, look, look, a little physical training, uh, you know, taking care of your body, that's okay, that's good, that's got some value, but there's much greater value in godliness, in living in a way that reflects kingdom values, because that's going to make your life better, and it's going to make life better for the people around you, and, and we can all do that. You know, you know what you can do? You know what you can do to, to live out a life that people might think is godly these days? Be not, just be nice just be nice. You know, if somebody's teeing off on social media, you don't have to tee off on them. You can just ignore them, uh, particularly on Twitter, which is a real, a, a, a real kind of suck hole for that kind of, uh, for that kind of activity where, 
where people are just pouncing on people. Just let it go. And, and that's, that's godliness right there. Just don't be drawn into that. Be nice when people don't expect you to be nice. Love people who don't expect you to love them. And people notice that. They see that. And that becomes then added value for you because you know you're living into God's will for you. And it becomes added value for the people around you who are positively impacted by that. It's really not that hard if... If we're seeking to live that out and, living, and, and to live that, those godly values out in our life every day. And here's another thing that Paul talks about. He talks about um, godliness and the, uh, godliness has value for all things. But it also this, what we believe will direct how we live. Down later in the passage, Paul says, watch your life and doctrine closely. And we hear doctrine and we think, well, that's just the church telling you what to do and what not to do. And that's really not what it is. The church is a place where we come and provides a support structure within which we can then grow into the life God always intended for us. It's not just a list of what to do and what not to do, but, but what we believe to be true will direct our life. If you are if you don't believe if you don't believe that human beings should fly, then you're never going to get on a plane and you'll never be able to go to places and see places that you you could have otherwise seen. Now, that's kind of an over the top example, but we live out of what we believe to be true. And and I've said this a hundred times before, so here's a hundred and one. But it's 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 so important and it's a, and it's an example of what I'm talking about. The most important thing I have ever learned in my life, and many of you have heard me say this, so I'm saying it again. The most important thing I have ever learned, and I believe is the most important thing any human being can ever learn, is that God loves you. God loves you no matter what. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter who you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you haven't done, what you've said or what you haven't said, how good or how bad, how checkered your past may be, and mine is a checkerboard. I assure you, that doesn't matter. God loves you now, and he wants a, he wants a beautiful future for you. And I would have never known that if I hadn't read the Gospel of John. And I would have probably never read the Gospel of John if I hadn't gone to Middlebrook Pike United Methodist Church in 1988 with Lynn and Lauren. Christy wasn't born yet. And we decided to go back to church. If I hadn't gone back to church, I would have never known that. You know, Paul tells Timothy... Um, uh, Devote yourself to public reading of scripture, to the preaching and teaching. In those days, a lot of people couldn't read and there weren't many books. So someone had to tell them. But for me, I took this disciple Bible study and that's where I learned from scripture that God loved me and it changed everything. I didn't think God wanted anything to do with me. Why would he want to have anything to do with me? And, and you may think the same thing. Why would he want anything to do with you? Because you know where you've been and you know what you've done. And, and if you listen to other people, sometimes people will tell you you can't overcome that. And a lot of people never rise above what people have told them about themselves. And well, you've done this and you've done that and you don't have any potential and you don't have any potential but then you read the bible and you find out you have tons of potential because god loves you period and you can't stop him and you won't find that out anywhere other than reading this book or hearing it proclaimed and that's why it's so important that's why doctrine is so important those are important pieces of doctrine that we need to know and that is that God loves everybody unconditionally. And think about how that might change the path of your life right now. If you were to take that seriously and believe it, how would that change the way you love other people? How would it change your relationships? If you realize that God loves me unconditionally, maybe, maybe I should cut some other people a little slack. You know, I don't mean compromise your principles and all that. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we could offer a little grace too because first person included right here, God has offered me a lot of grace. Doctrine is important because we will live out of what we believe to be true. And one more thing, never underestimate the power of a godly life. It's the power of God flowing through us that can literally change the world, one heart, one person at a time. And I love this. Don't, in verse, verse 12, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. That's why I want to make sure we all understand Timothy was young, comparatively speaking. 
Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. And that's really poignant as we think about these high school seniors that are about to launch out into the next phase of their life. And it's awfully easy to feel like you're being looked down upon upon people because you're only, you know, 17, 18 years old right now and you've only been through 12 years of school and you hear that only and well, you've got a long way to go. Yeah, maybe, but you are who you are right now. And don't ever let anybody look down on that. Oh my gosh, when I think about some of the leaders out of this, out of these seniors in our youth group, and and they've been through a lot, and I think about the way some of these kids uh, have led this youth group by just hanging in there. It's unbelievable. Let me ask you a question. If you think about, if you think about, you know, looking down on people that are younger, and well, you got to live, you got a little bit older before you'll be able to help and lead and all that. A show of hands, how many people, how many people, thought that that Olivia's song was terrible that didn't have any power how many people were not moved by Olivia's song show of hands how many people thought that Olivia was just kind of singing that because she was supposed to didn't believe any of the words how many show of hands yeah me neither let me tell you why Olivia doesn't sing well for a senior in high school. She just sings well. She has this huge heart for Jesus, and it's this gift. Like Paul kept telling Timothy, you have this gift inside of you, and don't ever let anybody look, cause you to look down on that gift because it's God flowing through you. That's the power of a godly life. And Olivia just stands up here, and she just belts it out. She just opens her mouth and belts it out. And we have other students that can do the same thing, and they also lead in other ways. And sometimes we we get looked down upon because, I don't know, because we came from here or because we've never done this or because we live there or we dress this way or we have this accent or we believe this way politically or blah, blah, blah. And people can look down on us for a lot of different reasons, whether we're young or old. And so I want to broaden that out a little bit and just say, not just because you're young, but don't let anyone ever look down on you because you have a gift, just like Olivia has a gift, just just like a lot of these, um, all of these other seniors have. We all have this gift of God that was given to us by the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ. And no one can look down on that. No one can diminish that power. And the world will be changed as we walk out into it if we just let people see that gift. And don't ever let anybody talk you out of that. Because that's God flowing through you. Please, 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 we, we need everybody letting their gift be seen. And don't let anyone ever try to take that away from you. That's where we find added value in living. When we let, when we let God live through us. Because if we'll just do that, then the Holy Spirit will live through us and we will live a more godly life. And we will live those kingdom values out. And it will happen every day. And lives will be, our life will be changed and the lives of people around us will be changed forever. This was the point I think that Jesus was making with his disciples. Uh, You know, when they were together on uh, the night that he was arrested, the night before he was, was crucified on our behalf. And Jesus, Jesus was with his disciples and And these were people who had been looked down on all their life. You know, they were just redneck fishermen from Galilee. And the ones that weren't redneck fishermen were were tax collectors. (laughs) And they were, they were, I mean, they were just looked down on. They were all looked down on. And Jesus said, no, 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 from now on, I want you to think about this. Don't everybody, don't ever let anybody think that your life doesn't have value. Because I'm going to show you how much value your life has before God. And with a loaf of bread, they started to see what he was talking about. He's going to give himself up for us. He's going to give his life up to show us the value our life has and to give us the power to live a life of even greater value. Then he passed that cup. This is my life's blood, he said. And I'll give it up for you gladly so that you can be filled with it. Talk about added value for heaven's sake. So that you, so that you can live maximum capacity. So that you can have abundant life, not just in existence. That's what he wanted for his disciples. They needed it and all the people that would be impacted by them needed it. You need it. Heaven knows I need it. 
We were built for maximum life. And if you think you're not experiencing maximum life, God wants to add value because you're so valuable to him. So when you come to the table, I pray that you will think of this bread and this juice as reminders of how valuable you are to God and how by claiming that, it will add value to your life as you live it out into the world and you will add then value to the lives of people around. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for these simple gifts of bread and juice. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, those who are going to serve, please come forward. Again, we'll have four stations, and just come to the one that you think is closest to you, and uh, it'll all work out.